Hello, everyone, and welcome to Seriously Loco, the Seriously Crazy Fan Podcast for El Paso Locomotive FC. I'm your host, Phil Baki. Tonight, uh, I'm joined by the full crew. Uh, we've got Mika Burrell. Mika, what's up? Yo, not much. Another good one for the listeners. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. Very, <laughs> very big one. Uh, we've got Austin Young back as well. Austin, what's up? Hey, guys. How's it going? It's been a while. Yeah, we're, I'm excited to have you back. Um, and we've got Christian Canales, Christian, um, you took a risk tonight in the Real Madrid kit. <laughs> I had a, had like a one for three shot. So I had to, to take my chances. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, like Mika said, uh, this is a really special one. And, uh, so, uh, last episode we had, uh, Aiden Apodaca on, um, so to continue our trend and, and get to know, all of uh, our new signings, our new locos that are on board the train. Um, tonight, we're joined by a very special guest, Jose Aguinaga. Jose, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, guys, and thank you for the invitation. Yeah, of course. Um, I mean, first things first, you've made the, the short trip down uh, from Phoenix to El Paso. How, how are you finding El Paso so far? Uh, well, it's uh, been I haven't had enough like time as I would like like to explore because preseason is like you know it's a lot of like training and resting. When you're not training, you're resting. But so far, the like little that I've seen, the restaurants, uh, the food, Mexican food, uh, it's unbelievable. I I really enjoy it so far. The the little that I know. Well, we're uh, we're very happy to have you. Obviously. Um you know, have a little reputation as now we have some history in the game and, and a little bit of a rivalry between, between, uh, your former club and ours. So happy to have you, you know, on this side of the rivalry now. Yeah. I'm ha- happy to be in this side too. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Um, well, for, for those listeners, listeners who don't know, you are, you are originally from Madrid, Spain and, and, um, obviously rich history of, of the game, um, in Madrid. So can you just tell us a little bit about, you know, your upbringing growing up with the game in, in Madrid and, and just how you came up, um, you know, with the game there? Uh, well in Spain, uh, soccer or football, as we say, it's everything, you know, um, I, I just remember always playing football uh, in school, in the recess, in recess, always with a ball in my feet. So obviously, it's, football is a big part of uh, Spanish culture, and uh, that's I guess uh, part of like who I am and, and what 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 I like. Um, luckily, we have uh, Mexico right here, which is also very. Uh, it's a, it has a big uh, soccer culture, and uh, here in El Paso, so from what I understand, is it's kind of the same. So. Yeah. We got to ask Jose, who did you support as a kid or or who do you support now? Um obviously Christian took a gamble with the Real Madrid <laughs> kit, but who who did you grow up supporting? I grew up and I'm still a supporter for Real Madrid. So All right. <laughs> There we go. That's good. That's my good. powerball Christian. <laughs> I was happy to see that jersey, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I actually played for the academies when I was like 16, 14 and 15, I think, U14 and U15. Uh, that was an unbelievable experience, but I am more uh, specifically from Vallecas, which is a little, not so little, is a, is a big neighbor, one of the, I think it's the biggest neighborhood in Madrid. So it's kind of funny because like people from Vallecas, we don't say we're from Madrid, we say we're from Vallecas. <laughs> so the team there is Rayo Vallecano is actually the former team of uh, Juma <laughs> so uh, if I were to pick first I think I'll pick Rayo Vallecano first before Real Madrid if they were to play each other I'll pick Rayo Vallecano but, but since they're not in the same league I support Real Madrid so that's fair so what was it what was it like uh, growing up watching Yuma for Rayo Vallecano as a child <laughs> I mean, I re- I remember very vividly. I I remember when uh, 2019 when we played against El Paso. I remember in I think it was a Friday or a Thursday. We, we always have that video and you know analyze different players from the team we we're about to play. And I remember seeing uh, Juma, and I remember seeing the video, and I remember seeing the long hair and the way he plays. 
because it's very characteristic. And I was like, no way, is that him? So I look it up and it was him. <laughs> so I remember awesome. like the first, the first play of the game. And since he was playing midfielder too, uh, we were like together. And I, the first thing I told him was like, dude, I'm from Vallecas. Uh, I, watch, I, I grew up watching you. And he was like, no way. And since then it was kind of like the connection. Uh, it was really nice to me during the whole game. Uh, and then after that too, we like keep in touch. And I mean, grow, growing up watching the, I remember I would play for the academies. I would be like eight, nine till like 14 years old. Those like five, six years. And we'll go with ball kids. So I maybe it would be a, a ball kid for the first team games. And he will be there since, because he was, since, since he was very young, like 17, he was already in the first team. So I remember, I perfectly remember like seeing the, the games and they were amazing because they were like home. That's awesome. So, you know, like, like we've been talking, you spent time in the Canteras at, at Getafe, at Real Madrid, at Rayo. And then, of course, you came to the States and you played college soccer and then some, some MLS U23. Can you tell us kind of about the differences or, or the similarities even between, you know, how, football as it's, as it's taught to you in the Spanish academies and, and North American soccer as far as tactically, physically, technically? Yeah. Can you just kind of compare and contrast for us? I get this question a lot, and I guess I always say, I always say the same. Uh, Spain is like so big, the culture that even as a kid, you were treated kind of as a professional in a way that I remember I was 14, 15 years old. There were agents around, there were like contracts around. Uh, there are some, that's like outside of the game. There's some good things and bad things about that. Obviously, you can imagine being 14 years old and uh, having an agent reaching out to you is like kind of crazy. Uh, inside the game, uh, I would say in Spain, the academies, I don't, I don't know how the academies were here, uh, but the academies were very serious. Like uh, every kid was like, you were in the academies of Real Madrid, Getafe, Rayo, it was like a big thing. In the school, everybody knew, oh, this is the one that is in this academy or that academy. Here, I feel like from what like I've little experience with the U23s and all that, it's a little bit more relaxed because I guess football is not the first, or soccer is not the first sport. Uh, but I mean, it's kind of the same, like Red Bull and Seattle are really good academies. They're really good MLS teams. So they have the same principles of teaching the kids uh, the right things about the game and, and the right things to do outside of the game, which for, for us in Real Madrid and Rayo and Getafe, they did. They teach us, so it's kind of all the same thing. Um, so yeah, I guess inside and outside, those are the similarities and differences. So coming up through those academies, and aside from Yuma, um, who did you idolize when you were growing up uh, as a player, and who do you who do you think of when you think of your own playing style? Well, it's funny because as James, I remember when I was very young. I remember looking at Ronaldo, the Brazilian guy, you know, the no Cristiano. And I remember admiring him because I used to play forward. I used to be a forward, but when I was like really young. Uh, so Ronaldo would be the guy that I would be like, I remember buying his cleats, watching his videos and all this. Ronaldinho also, I really liked the style. Uh, once I kept growing, <coughs> growing and uh, I wouldn't say change my style, but adapting to like changes in my body and stuff. I would like more, like, I used to look at more, like, players like Zidane, um, more midfields, you know, midfielders. Uh, right now, I really like Luka, uh, uh, Luka Modric, uh, Kroos, uh, for me, at uh, top midfielders, uh, Thiago. Um, yeah, so I, I guess those will be my favorite players. He was a big Liverpool fan, so I think he liked the <laughs> Thiago shout. <laughs> <laughs> so... Yeah. So you'll enjoy then playing next to uh, Richie and Yuma, like defensive midfielders who can who can protect your your more kind of progressive style. Then, yeah, I mean, as you said it, like I remember playing against them, and the way it's just different, like the way they these kind of players, you know, treat the ball. It's more like I don't know how to say it in words, but like it's different. You see, the touch is different, the passes are different the speed of the ball and everything is different. It's just better. So I really enjoy it. And it's like a privilege to be, you know, with them. You talk about, um, 
obviously knowing the the players from El Paso and and some of the guys from playing against them in Phoenix. And I'm always interested when when somebody joins who's obviously played against Locomotive and had some some heated contests, including, you know, Western Conference final not that long ago. Um, What kind of reputation does El Paso have outside of El Paso? You know, what what was the talk, you know, in the in the days leading up to those games about El Paso style or about about their reputation as players? Well, it's a really good reputation. You, uh, we like to have the ball uh, with team. Uh, Pass always loves to play a beautiful game, beautifully. Uh, and for me, as a player, that's the way it should be done. Trying to put a show. Obviously, the most important thing is to win. But I think here also it matters how you win. Where some other clubs maybe it doesn't really matter if it's like beautiful or not. You just care about winning, which. Fair enough, it's, it works. But um, I think there's a responsibility from us, players and, and, and not even more coaches and everybody. People are paying to see that. Might as well put a nice show, right? So I think that for me, that's the reputation that it has. And now that I'm here, I'm, I'm enjoying it because I love having the ball. I love uh, getting to move around, you know, and, and having more possession and, and creating good goals. Obviously, the results have to be there too. But I, I guess that's the reputation like of a team that likes to have the ball, likes to create, very, very good with the ball. So when you heard that El Paso was interested, you, um, you know, I'm assuming you were in contact with, you know, Mark and, and the, maybe the rest of the staff here, Yuma probably reached out, I'm sure, <laughs> um, to maybe, to maybe persuade you, but, but how did that come about? And just how, you know, what, what really drew you? Was it that style that drew you to El Paso? Yeah, most likely. Yeah, certainly that's for me, the top thing, the style of play, I think it fits me pretty well as a player and seeing, Playing against someone and seeing that they're doing what you like to do, and then if if they're interested in you joining the team, it's like well, it's a perfect fit. Hopefully, you know I'm right. Um, so yeah, I guess that, and then obviously having Juma here will play a big role because uh, always going to a new place, uh, a new di- different city, and not not knowing anyone. Sometimes it's like a little bit hard, but since day one, I always had Juma, you know, helping and. And and the other guys too, because uh, everybody in the team is really nice. But yeah, I guess those two things and the conversation I have with uh, with Mark and, and and learning a little bit more about the culture or what's what like designed me to be like, okay, yeah, I, I think this is a really good fit. So <clears throat> obviously when you when you make the decision to come, you've had conversations with, you know, like you said, how the game is played here, um, kind of what what our our goals and our um, I guess priorities are in the field. Um, so between that and the couple of training sessions that you've got in now with the team, what what do you see yourself doing? What what is your role on this team, or what, what do you see it as in the future? Well, I think that if El Paso you were to ask, it's there's not really much individual roles. Uh, obviously, the forwards are supposed to score, midfield to get the ball, and all that, defend their defense. But that's kind of what I like about the team. We all have kind of the same goals, right? Like, we all defend, we all attack. Obviously, I'm a midfielder, so uh, helping with the distribution and creation in the, in the last third of the field, that's what I think I, I, I do best. So, if you were to ask individually that, but as, as I say, I think we all as a team have to, you know, defend together and attack together. And and how have those uh, those early training sessions now that you guys are into preseason and and it's really you, we've seen you know on social media all the the workouts the conditioning and all of that how are you finding El Paso obviously a little bit of elevation maybe the air's a little thin um, yeah and uh, maybe yeah. adapting to that a little bit <laughs> yeah actually yeah the first week I noticed that elevation a lot I remember like I my like I couldn't breathe it was hard to breathe <laughs> but you get used to it. You get used to everything. Uh, coaches have, uh, and teammates have been really good at like helping with uh, everything, and they're pushing as hard as we should in the pre season. But I think it's it's going well. I mean, it's still like I think four or five weeks more, or six. I don't know how many weeks more left in the pre season. It's still early, but um, so far I'm really happy. 
Now, Jose, we've kind of noticed, uh, you know, over the past two seasons that Mark's been in El Paso, his style of football is very possession based and very different from what people are used to here in the States. Now, how would you say, has it been a difficult adaptation to a style of football since you've been here? No, because I think as, as I say, I think that's what fits me best. Uh, coming from Spain, run teams like Real Madrid, Getafe and Rayo, they kind of, uh, all the academy is ba- based on that in Spain, uh, having the ball, uh, having fun with the, having fun with the game. Uh, here, it's true that the American football is a little bit different. It's a little bit more physical. So for me, it was kind of like adapting to that. And I think I, I adapt to that. And now it's like going back to like, I think basics that I've always enjoyed doing. So it's, I'm enjoying it. Um, I'm curious. What, so we talked about, obviously, the transition that you went through, you know, from a from a playing perspective, coming from Spain to the United States, but what was it like off the field? Can you talk about kind of what that journey was like coming from Spain to coming to play for play college here? Uh, yeah, that was, that was, uh, hard. That was really hard because I didn't knew, I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't know them any English at the time. So it was really hard to just, you know, get in the plane and going to a place where nobody spoke my language uh, things were are done really different, especially in college soccer. Um, it was yeah, the first months were were a struggle, <laughs> but yeah. What uh, I'm I'm also curious what makes what led to that decision. Obviously, going from playing you know um, in a professional system in Spain to deciding to come to America to play in a you know in the college system. What goes yeah. into that decision? It, there's a lot of things going on. Uh, my parents always, like I say, always encourage me to keep studying because football, you never know. You know, you, one day you're here, one day you're not. Um, and I always wanted to have a degree. So back the, uh, back uh, in Spain, I was playing for the for Getafe. I was already with the second team, like training with them and stuff. And I was still pursuing my degree. I even got into uh, the architecture school or architecture, uh, which is a, like a tough uh, degree in Spain to get. And I got in like the, I, I got in, which for me was already hard enough because like doing soccer and that is really hard. And then the last year, I remember hearing about the opportunity of coming to the States and playing and they uh, helping you with the studies. And in Spain, that wasn't the reality I had. I remember in Spain, the last year, uh, they telling me, okay, get your classes in the afternoon because you're going to be with the second team, which were already professional, and you're going to train with them. And then when you don't play with them, you go and play with your team, the under-19s. And I did that, and it was really hard enough because I would have to like wake up at 9 a.m., go train, go back, eat in 30 minutes, go to the school for six hours, and dead. And towards like after two or three months, they were like, okay, well, you're not with the professionals anymore. You go, but go back to the U19s. And I was like, the United States training in the afternoon, and they were like, well, do you want to be a soccer player or do you want to study, like kind of choose? And for me, it's like, that's kind of like what I miss in Spain. The academies will do better because they, because I mean, yeah, you have to focus a lot in soccer, but also like soccer is hard. It's hard to get a professional and and be there. Even if you make it, it's, it's hard that our careers are really short. Um, so them not appreciating the effort that, Sometimes we and the kids put into how to study, going to practice, performing, studying. It's really hard. It's a lot of stress at a young age. So for me, them saying, you have to figure it out, should pick one or either or. I'm not really caring about my you know, future. It was like, okay, like I see you don't care. Then I hear about this opportunity in the States. I'm just going to go there. And it was kind of crazy because I didn't know anything about it. And when I got there... The first week, I was like, "What have I done?" But <laughs> but it, it, it worked out very well because I got my degree and now I'm playing professional. So I'm really happy with that decision. That's awesome, man! Congratulations. Thank you. In fairness, though, I think uh, I think even for an American showing up the first week to college, you're like, "What have I done?" Um, and, <laughs> and so to come from a completely different continent, I can't even imagine uh, how how difficult that must have been. <laughs> yeah, no, it was it was really hard, especially with the language barrier. It was crazy. I remember I uh, I don't know a lot of things, uh, stories that I maybe cannot tell here, but really <laughs> funny situations. <laughs> uh, 
Well, I mean, I'm, whatever you're comfortable sharing, we're, we're, we're pretty, we're pretty lenient here, but Derek might, <laughs> might step in. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it all involves having a friend that is a friend, you know, it's a friend. And then you ask him, how do you say something? And he says the, the word. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, and then you ended up asking for who knows what. <laughs> that <laughs> that the, happens uh, here, Jose, in El Paso. That happens in yeah. the schools here. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> with the new kids from out of town that don't know Spanish. Exactly. Yeah, same thing, but with English. Yeah. Always learn the bad words first. Always. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I actually specifically remember when I first moved here, they told a kid from out of town. He asked, "How do I get the teacher's attention?" And the kid said, "You ask her, hey vieja." <laughs> <laughs> and he did it and got in big trouble. <laughs> That's funny. That's a funny one. Yeah, for me, I think it was I wanted a stapler, and and they uh, my friend in class. It was I think it was one of my teammates, or I think it was a friend of a teammate. But he was kind of like a friend. So I was like, how how do you say like you know the thing to like put the mm-hmm. papers together? And he asked told me to ask for a dildo. <laughs> <laughs> Oh so no! So I went around class asking for a dildo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the, third, the, the third person I asked, and I think it was a girl, looked at me like, "What?" <laughs> I was like, "Okay." And he was cracking up in the corner. I was like, "You." <laughs> oh, that's amazing! Oh my god, that is amazing! Yeah. Unbelievable! Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, Jose, I'm curious, um, before I get on to like our last question, but Aguinaga, is that a Basque name? Do you have Basque heritage? You know, it is. It is a Basque. I don't know because my parents are actually from Paraguay. Um, okay, but, there we go. Yeah, they, they, it's been like 30 years now there. So we're four brothers and all the four of us were born in Spain. So they okay. were actually the first, one of the first uh, immigrants from Paraguay to Spain. Um <laughs> So, yeah, we all, I always ask my dad, and he says yes. And in, back in the 50s or 40s, there was a lot of immigration from the Basque, from the north of Spain towards yeah. South America, especially Argentina. But I guess since Paraguay is close. Right. So that's what I, I put together, but I, I don't have a confirmation. But it's Basque for sure. Awesome, awesome. Wow. All right. So we ask everyone that comes on to the Seriously Local podcast – Especially the new guys. And you spoke about it, that you like Mexican food. So what, what's the best thing you've eaten in El Paso so far? I had a calamari the other day. And uh, it was really good. Was really <laughs> Where was good. that at? A La Palapa. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. La Palapa, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. La Palapa. <laughs> they have, I think we also have taco, uh, octopus. I think it was. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it was really good. It was amazing. But hey, you're a bunch of suggestions because I still have a lot of <laughs> For sure, for sure. That's awesome. Um, well, Jose, I, I want to, I want to thank you for, uh, for coming on and joining us. Um, really excited to seeing you, uh, turn out in a loco, a loco kit, uh, this year. But my, my last question is us watching from El Paso, watching us play, play you guys, uh, when you were out there in Phoenix, uh, a lot of times you were showing up with the with the blonde highlights or the uh, the the blonde the frosted tips. Um, are are we going to see uh, Blondie Naga in the uh, in, in this season? <laughs> Naga, <laughs> I like that name. I, like that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. It was it went well when I did it with Phoenix. So I don't know. I think maybe maybe. <laughs> We'll see. All right. Well, we're like I said, we're really looking forward to seeing you seeing you turn out for the team and and uh, excited to um, yeah to see these preseason games and and get into the the meat of the season. And thanks again for for joining us. Thank you guys for having me. Jose, thanks Jose. Thank you. That was Jose Aguinaga joining Seriously Loco. Um, what a pleasure to have him on hilarious at times, uh, super informative, obviously a guy who has tons of history in the game and literally grew up <laughs> watching Yuma play for Rio Vallecano. Um, just an amazing link, uh, with this team and 
Jose now on the right side, as we said, of the Phoenix El Paso rivalry, which I feel grows each season. Um, and hopefully he'll be able to get one over his old employers uh, this year. But excited to see Jose turn out for for Locomotive. And we've uh, we're going to be covering all of it all this season, as we have for the last couple of seasons. Um, it's Seriously Loco uh, at Seriously Loco on Twitter. You can find us on all the podcast platforms. Uh, make sure you subscribe and catch all this content, which we're going to be continuing to drop um, as the season goes on. Um, we're going to be good, doing more and more this year, bigger, better uh, than it ever was. So make sure you guys are checking it out. And thank you guys for tuning in. Until next time, stay loco.